Hello, Mickey. Greetings from the Dank Basement. This is Paul Shelbitter, your Uncle Squinty. I want to thank you, first of all, for taking the time and overcoming your camera shyness to make me a video reply. I appreciate it. Regarding the Google stuff, I have not yet complained because I have the sneaking suspicion that I'm just doing something wrong and that I'm making it harder than it needs to be. Um, so, no need for a letter writing campaign quite yet. I'm going to see what I can do to figure out the Google interface. It is tough. I mean, um, it used to be so much easier with YouTube when you could simply stay on the video page and just write a comment and reply to comments. It is not that way anymore, which is tough. And um, But I, I still think there's got to be some kind of workaround, and I just haven't found it yet. Thanks for giving me a second there to get the pipe lit. Um, packed and lit, I should say. Let's talk a little bit about, not just about blindness, but about people that look at life from different perspectives. A disability or being a circus freak is not required, obviously, to have a different perspective on life. Although I will say that I think that any disability creates an opportunity to meet different challenges from those that are faced by quote-unquote normal people in society. And it does encourage one to believe, at least in my case, uh, I have to believe in the goodness of other human beings. I have to. I don't really have a choice. If I am walking around a strange city, which I have done in the past, you know, alone, and get lost, you have to depend on other people. I have to tell you a, an interesting story about the goodness of people. Um, my wife and I went to Europe in 1997 for a honeymoon that was delayed by nine years. We had to get the money together. And um, we were often assisted by people that we referred to as angels. They just seemed to appear out of nowhere. We would be lost on Paris's incredibly complicated subway system and would run into somebody who would guide us. Uh, that happened very frequently while we were in Europe, that sort of thing. Strangers who would simply step forward, befriend us, and help us. And sometimes we had to suspend disbelief or look at things from a different angle. A small example of this, and it's not a huge example, but remember this is before all of the political movement for equal rights for gays. All right, as an example, we ran into a gay couple when we were in Madrid. One of the guys was very serious. He was a college professor at an Ivy League college and a very, very serious man. And his partner, who was Latino, I think Cuban, was over the top, woohoo, <laughs> gay, if you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's the personality that is manifested by some gay men who are truly gay. I mean, in the sense of being happy. Uh, over the top. I'm gay. I love life. I suck penises. Wee! <laughs> and uh, at the time, my wife and I were both a little more conservative. And we learned from spending an evening with this couple how normal they actually were, you know, you had the worried sort of conservative partner and you had the vivacious over the top partner and it was an education, but we had to trust these guys. We did not have a choice because we were lost. They found us. We ended up going to dinner together. It's that kind of thing. So um, one of the things I will say is that my particular disability has provided me with a wonderful opportunity to learn how good people can be. It has also, sadly, given me an opportunity to learn how bad people can be. 
taxi drivers who hand you a dollar bill and tell you that it's a five, uh, pickpockets, uh, people that pretend to befriend you so they can come into your house to rob you. All of these things have happened to us. Oddly enough, it really hasn't soured our perception of the goodness, the essential goodness of people. And I think that's been a really important um, learning thing. I do my best to be as not blind as possible. Not that I deny my disability, but I don't, I try not to let it affect me too much uh, or limit me. As an example, I travel frequently to Central America, in fact, to some fairly dangerous locations, and I travel alone. And the reason I do that is because I want to immerse myself in the culture so I can learn more than Spanish to improve my Spanish, but also to learn about the culture, about the politics, about what's going on, about poverty, which is something that I've never really known. Thank God I've been middle class, I've been fairly blessed, had to work hard, but um, I live in a very comfortable situation compared to a lot of the people I know in Central America. So that has been a, a tremendous experience. I actually swam in the sewers of Central America in the nightlife with the whores and the drug dealers and the shady, shifty, and scandalous characters who populate night scenes in any major city. And that has been a learning experience and has changed my perceptions about everything from commercial sex and drug use to the fundamental differences between men and women. And there are fundamental differences in perception and process. Um, I guess that's all I really wanted to say. I do welcome the dialogue. If we have to do it via G, uh, email, old-fashioned email, I know you're only 31. You're probably much more accustomed to texting, which is something I do not do, uh, or Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. I don't do any of that stuff. I barely use my Facebook account. I mostly just friend people and uh, accept messages from them through Facebook and respond through Facebook. Um, what I use is old-fashioned email, old-fashioned snail mail when I have someone to read it for me, uh, and telephone conversations, and now YouTube. I appreciate, again, thank you for overcoming your reluctance to make a video, Mickey. I appreciate it a lot. Hang on. Ah, I hate it when they do that. I'm sitting behind the camera is a duct for our furnace ventilation air conditioning system. And it is currently blowing air and it's putting out every match I try to light. We'll see if we can do this again. And there we go. So anyway, Mickey, yeah, I welcome all kinds of dialogue, and I do encourage you to continue with your project. I, it sounds fascinating, and I hope that you do finish it, and I would love to be a part of it if I can in some way, if only as an end consumer of your artwork. I hate to use the term end consumer, but for me to say look at it sounds a little disingenuous. Anyway, from the dank basement, Mickey, thank you. I appreciate the communication, and I appreciate and respect your intelligence, and I thank you for corresponding. From the Dank Basement, this is Paul with a private message for Mikhail. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye.